What is good friends, we are here with OUPL Femen vs uh, Pocketis Jig Gamer <laughs> And yeah, I was waiting for this game, I was about to go to sleep But yeah, it finally happened <laughs> This is a Mew Tangrowth type of balance And yeah, that's a Scarf Kelly probably Actually, it could be it could be a Scarf Latios, and the Kelly could not be Scarf, but it only did 12% with a Skull to the Tangrowth. So I want to Kulk of that Scarf. Because every Tangrowth is AV these days, right? Yeah, it does 11 to 13, so that's Salt vs Tangrowth. The Mobile is obvious here. The Mobile can come in for free unless it's HP 5 Tangrowth. You can also go for a Mew if he doesn't want to risk the Mobile. But he does go Mobile. And yeah, he just goes for a knockoff. They're like the moral was kind of obvious there, so he, he could have doubled. Um, <laughs> why did I pronounce it like that? What the fuck? <laughs> could have double breaked in the moral into something like Keychain or maybe Mew, because Mew can get a f free Will o Wisp. It comes in on moral. So the Z move is either gonna be uh, the Outrage Zygarde or maybe on the Larios. I assume. I think like the Celestia should be bulky on this team to check that Bolelia as Lernus is offensive on this team so it takes 5 million from this player off. It might be off played Lernus, I think he likes to use that set. I uploaded a live with a Pokédex G game at team today so you guys can check that out if you want. But yeah he's probably gonna go for... If he has rocks on Trenna on Mew he's not gonna go for rocks here. It's so like Pokéjiji Gamer, I assume he's a uh, Scarf Chomp. Z move on Thunderous or on. Huh. Like, this Landris is probably off play, like I said, and I think Z move is either on Thunderous or Heaton, yeah. I don't think he's Z move on Landris. So, if he breaks the self steal, I can go for Smackdown. Uh, if, he, if he's Fist of Mew, he can go into Mew, but off play, uh, off quick should do a lot if he's that sad. I think he will go on to Celesteela or Latios. Oh, he can also go for Sucker Punch, obviously, but... Yeah, he can obviously go for Sucker Punch, that's true. So I can see PokéDigg going into his um, Heatran. Heatran covers the Sucker Punch, it covers the Latios, and it covers the Celesteela. But he does just go for Rocks, so I wasn't sure if he was Rocks on this, but yeah, if he has Rocks on this, he can obviously go for that. Yeah, I think he was actually Rocks Landris on the other team that I was using earlier, too, with Earthblade Lander. Just don't remember that well, cause um, I woke up earlier at like 6 a.m. and now it's past midnight, so I'm like 19 hours awake, or even longer. Nah, nah, about 19 hours. But so yeah, I didn't catch that turn there, but he get, uh, got off a lead seat on the Mew. So they both have a Mew to check Medicham and what else? Yeah, it also checks more well in the sense. I mean. He has a Heatran too to check Mawal. But Femen's team is like switch and survive, it's kinda weak to Mawal. Cause like Celestia gets blown away by Thunder Punch and you don't wanna go Ladi. Like Ladi doesn't do anything with Mawal. Even if it has HP fire or something like that, you can just sucker punch it. But yeah, goes Heatran on the player of as a tank rose was in. The Heatran was pretty obvious there, but Femen just played it safe. And I assume we're gonna see Magma Storm or Toxic, something like that. As he misses a Toxic. Um, yeah, that's some mem bad memories for him. Like, he missed the Toxic in week 2. As he doubles up breaking the Tang Rose. And this time, if he has Focus Punch, he can go for Focus Punch, break in the Heatran. And yeah, he get, does go for Focus Punch, break in the Heatran. Oh my lord. This is like throwback, because like, Pokédex G, G made like the same play. Um, like one or two weeks ago, I think two weeks ago in um, OEPL. Hmm. Yeah, I can see this um, Sandris. If it's a live up, it can obviously kill with a T bolt. It could also be the physical set. With like Wild Charge or Z Wild Charge. Or what, uh, no, not Z Wild Charge. Super Sonic Sky Strike. Z Fly. So he's either gonna go Latios or go for Sucker Punch, maybe. Sucker Punch could be dangerous in the sense that this could have bulk up, but I think Latios should be fine here. 
you can also check this depending on if it's um, more fistev or more speed. like some new run a mixed defensive set to be able to defog on protein Greninja because most protein Greninjas don't run uh, dark bolts at the moment because Metagross got banned so there's not really a point in running that it wasn't even that common when Metagross was on a tier but now it's even less common so yeah I don't know if even team exactly but I would probably go Larios even though this could have knockoff so you can like Poker DCG gamer he's kind of in the back because like he missed the Toxic on the Kelly on the Cedron die to the Focus Punch, so I can see him going for an aggressive play like Knockoff Pricked in the Larios. Hmm. I mean, this this Marvel is super valuable still for Femin because he just killed the Hedron that was like the only player of resist. So we can, like, when this comes in on the Tangros, it's always super dangerous for Poké TCG. So I would keep this model for sure, probably, if I was Femin. So, knowing that this model is valuable, I would probably go for Knock of Brick in Ladios, as he just does just go for T Bolt, which is understandable. But yeah, if he has Knock Off, he can kill this Ladios if it's not Scarf Laddie. Um, yeah, he's probably Scarf Kelios, so I could see this. This Laddie would either be Z Move or Soldu. Looking at the team, that's just what I think. I don't think it would be double scarf. Mm. So he's gonna switch out, maybe fear in the scarf, or if he doesn't have knockoff, I don't think he can kill this Larios. So I can see a double switch into more while he predicted the tank growth. Or the Mew. Actually, yeah, he can go the Mew. Mew is a really good play. I probably would have gone the Mew there in case he doubles at the ball while, but yeah, Defog was obviously the play that Femin wants to make to get rid of the rocks. Even though he doesn't have anything weak to hazard, it's still really nice to get hazards off the field. Um, the mobile is so obvious, I'm pretty sure that Poké TCG has to double out now, break in the mobile. Or if he has HP5, he can go for that, but I think he's HP eyes on this, because that was most AV Tango's run. Yeah, this is week 5 of OUPL, if I didn't mention it yet, week 6. I think OUPL has 6 weeks and then we go to playoffs. World Cup is starting in about 2 weeks, so that's gonna take over my channel. I'm gonna cover a lot of World Cup, stay tuned for that, but I'm still gonna try to get some of the OUPL games. My focus is obviously gonna be on World Cup when that starts. But he does double into Thunderous, which is a really good play. If that would work on the Larius, that can Larius could, could potentially come in on Tangos if it's Z move because you can't knock off Z crystals, or Mobile could come in like I said. So Thunderous was a really good play, and yeah, he can. This time he can uh, just go for T build I think because the Larius is weakened already. And yeah, Larius should defog. Scarf Larius run defog too sometimes, but like I said, um, a few times. I might repeat myself because I'm really tired. I do still think this is uh, not Scarf Larios. The Celestia has but they have to check. Um, okay, he does just go for Sucker Punch this time. So, like, the Marvel is super valuable. Like I said earlier, after killing the trend, which was the only pair of resist, but he still decided that he doesn't really have a good Sunburst switch in, so he was he was willing to sack his Marvel. As he doubled out there, um, he, he went into Landris pretty in the Sucker Punch and it didn't work out. Because if he, if he went Landris on the Sucker Punch, he could have gotten up rocks. So that was a nice play by Femin there, predicting uh, him to not go for an attacking move. Then you can go for will o -Wisp here or Volt Switch. If he has Volt Switch, that's like a pretty nice play, because you would not go for a uh, Sucker Punch here with the Marvel on the will o -Wisp. That's not the play you would want to make. Um, don't get any damage off if you suck a punch on a will o wisp So yeah, he's just going for play rough, I assume. But yeah, since he's probably um defog softball softball will o wisp and then he's either psychic, he psychic or volt switch, something like that. Yeah, he's either going for a para or just trying to get some chip damage there. As that did a lot because he got a crit, so that sucks. So he sh he does reveal that he's knock off. But he's getting hexed a bit, man. Toxic miss on the Keldeon, now a crit. So, I probably... Um, so, I think Pokuti GG predicted him to switch and save the mobile as fodder there. 
And he wanted to catch something with a knockoff. Oh, I don't know if that was necessary. Dang. Like the Toxic Miss on the Kelly or not a Sucker Punch crit. We'll see how much of a roll that plays. Like the Mew can... Might have been able to take an Outrage from like a potentially banded Zygarde. And been able to will wisp it, but um, I do think it is... Hmm. Like one of these two is the Z-Move mod, I'm just not sure which one. That, like in my opinion at least. I Like I, I know I can be wrong sometimes, or I am wrong sometimes. I'm definitely <laughs> not perfect with my analysis. But yeah, if he's banned Zygarde, he might be able to kill his Mew. We can just like put in a Kalk real quick to see. Um, Zygarde, Adamant, 252, and it's a thousand arrows. There's only 33 to 39. That does nothing. Oh, that's not banded. Uh, Choice Band Thousand Arrows does 50 to 58, but that's a Spidev Mew. Mews run more fist death. But yeah, losing the Mawa was huge in the sense that the Tangrus is actually now pretty good for Poké TCG. Because if he had the Tangrus around, he could the opponent could always double into more, predicting the Tangrus to come out. But yeah, Tangrus um, can eat up the Drago Meteor and then pivot out into something. Like he can. If he didn't get the crit on the Mew, Mew um, could have softballed up on the Ladio, so the crit mattered in that sense. But Mew might actually be able, if it has good, if it has some Spidev investment, it might be able to take a minus to Draco. But we see it's a life of Ladios, um, so yeah, that makes me think even more that it's a Z move, uh, Zygarde. Yeah, Draco would have killed the Mew for sure at that range, at 49. M like Mew's. They they run mixed defensive sometimes, yeah. Okay, he can um go for knockoff here. Pick off the now he doesn't pick off the Ladi because he's burned, yeah. But he lives at three percent. Now he can go to Mew because the Ladi's at minus four, so that that's not gonna do much, I think. The and the Ladi also um also does this life orb, so it's not gonna die to recall. I could see the Ladi um like if it's a uh, defog roost two attacks Ladios, I could see a roost coming out. It could also be three attacks, but yeah, th that's live or bloody, so that confirms that it's probably Scarf Kelly, like I was thinking the entire time. Yeah, yeah, like the Muse is like pretty much the only play here because you don't want to lose your Tangles yet. It's a thousand arrows resist, but yeah, if he's um, if the Muse is not fast enough for Zygarde, like. I see a lot of Mew like run like 60 speed or something like that. 64, something like that, which outs which doesn't outspeed max speed adamant Zygarde. It hits 289, so you would have to run like way more speed on Mew. <laughs> like he can speed creep Zygarde there on Adamant, but he would have to run like so much speed on his Mew, like he would almost have to run max speed. Yeah, so Aldrich just killed. As that, I don't know if Aldrich was the play. If he had a Z move, so that makes me think that he doesn't have a Z move. Because if he had a Z move, he could have gone for a Z move there. Because um, going for Aldrich that way, he was locked in and he couldn't switch out, so he had to sack his Zyger to the life of Sunrise. Whew. Yeah, Scarf Kelly, if this doesn't have T Wave. The Tangles are so low that Scarf Kelly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Femin just wins this game now. If Thunderous dies, so Steeler walls the entire team as he goes for Icy Wind there. Because Icy Wind was yeah, pretty much his best play. The only problem was that it could miss, so it's not 100% accurate, but it hits everything. Like, So if he. Doesn't have TV on Sunrise, he basically just loses. Garchomp can probably live an Icy Wind from full, but it cannot Oko to kill you. I think Outrage won't even kill, like, Outrage might do like 75, but won't kill for sure. So, yeah, he loses this game. Poké TCG, which sucks. Um, yeah, this Kelly should have been dead now with the poison, but there still would have been a Cell Stealer in the bag and a Mew. And what other hacks did he get? He, he did get a crit. Yeah, the, the crit on the Mew sucked. 
But um, it's hard to say if it was game deciding, because he also had his own Mew and a Celesteela to like throw Bleach Seeds and. Yeah, Poké DCG had knockoff and Willow was one of his Mews, so it could potentially actually beat the entire opposing team. But yeah, Thunder Blunder mentioned this in one of his UU analysis videos that like, Mews and UU at the moment, right? I, I don't know if the tier changes came out yet and if it's OU or something, because it's like kind of popular in OU, because because uh, it checks Medicham, which is one of the new megas that came out lately. But yeah, he basically mentioned that. The burn nerf is huge for stuff like Mew. The Stallbreaker set is not as good anymore. The Stallbreaker set runs a knockoff, Willow Wisp, uh, Softballed, and Taunt. And Willow Wisp just cancels out leftovers, so you don't actually do any damage anymore. So you have to knock off their leftovers, and then you have to Willow Wisp, and then you only do like 6% every turn. So it's pretty hard to stall them out that way. And beat him 1v1, especially if it's like a cliff fable. That's just one example. Because like knockoff doesn't do any damage, it's just to get rid of items. And yeah, in the last gen it burned it like the double the, the double the damage that it does now. It was like pretty like this new set was so much better. And yeah, that's not the main that's one of the other reasons why that set is not so good as uh, Misty Terrain, but yeah. This new technically could have one v one everything. Like you can knock off the Kaleo. To get rid of the scarf, so Garchomp outspeeds it, Sundress outspeeds. Uh, does Sundress actually? Sundress doesn't outspeed. Uh, Sundress outspeeds Kelio, yeah. I was thinking about Sundress Tyrion, but Sundress T outspeeds. Data Sundress. Yeah, Sundress T is 111 speed. Uh, just making sure that I don't say anything wrong here at <laughs> almost 1 am. <laughs> and yeah, the Solar Steel can release you the Mew, but you can still knock off the leftovers and. Try to pivot into Tangros on a leech sheet. Like his Mew would have been healthier, the, the game would have been different. And if he played it perfectly, he could have definitely won. As Mew beats Ladios one on one, he could have roosted up the Draco wouldn't have killed the Mew. So like the only play basically would for Femin would have been um Yeah, the only play for Femin probably would have been go to Bennett Zygar and weaken the Mew. And yeah, yeah, he if the if the Bennett Zygar outspeeds the Mew, which it probably does, Femin still could have won for sure. But um, if Pokotichi could have gotten rid of the Bandit Zygarde and have his Mew as a kind of healthy amount that it can heal up on the Kelio, for example, or on the opposing Mew, like at, at, say at 30% maybe, and the Kelio is locked in the skull or something like that. Like that scenario, he needed, or he had, could bring the Mew on the Celesteel and heal up. And he basically needed his Tangrus uh, still around to pivot in on stuff like Leech Sheet, like I mentioned earlier. And he could have won the game, but. Yeah, like the turn the Zygarde came in on, on the Mew, he basically had to sack something. Because I think the Mew... No, no, without the crit? Without the crit, he actually could have... Uh, the Zygarde couldn't have killed the Mew. So the Zygarde could have um, like gone for Outrage and done like... How much does Outrage do the Mew? Let's just calc this real quick. Um, so that does 66 to 78, and then this is a spdef Mew, so I will just give this Mew like some some defense, like 100 or something. So this that's just an example. Um, it might run a bit less, it might run a bit more defense. But yeah, that's 60 to 71, and the Mew was at how much percentage? Um, it was at like 50-ish, after the Sucker Punch. It was like at a bit over half, I think. So yeah, if it didn't get crit, it would have been at... It would not It would have been at like something around 70%. Might, I might be wrong, because it's like super late, like I said. But yeah, it would have definitely been able to live a Bennett Outrage. Then it could have gone for Wolves and crippled the Zygarde if it hits. As long as the Zygarde doesn't have like sub dragnets, but I'm pretty sure it was banded. Like just the way it was played. So yeah, it could have uh, Wolves the Zygarde and it was basically the main threat to the Mew. And then, like later on, he could have came in on the, could have came in on the, um, something like Celesteela or the opposing Mew. And if he like speed creeps opposing Mew, he can roost on that, or he can roost on Celesteela, like I said. So Femin would have to play it really careful, not bring those two mons in on the Mew ever, and like be careful that this Lali doesn't get to minus two. Or, like, actually, at minus two, it probably still kills the Mew at like fifteen percent, but. Like, so what I'm trying to say is, yeah, if Poké DCG game played it really well, like I said, he still had a slight chance, but 
I don't know if this analysis was like. I, I think it was correct for the most part, but yeah, if I made some mistakes, <laughs> like just just let me know in the comments. Like, I told you guys multiple times that it's late here, so this might be wrong. But yeah, PokerTG is gamer. His team was up two and zero. Oh. Okay, he he's called Rob. I can just call him Rob. That's the the other name is way too long. I don't know. Why I'm trying to pronounce the other name the entire time. So yeah, he's not. I think he's like two and four now in OEPL. Uh, he was two. He was one and zero. Oh, then he got a hex week two. I don't know how, if that was deciding. I don't remember. Uh, I think he won one game then. It was Alex, and then he lost one versus. Uh, yeah, so he's two and two. I think so. After this, he's two and three. But yeah, his team is still up two and one. I uh, missed uh, DJ's game, which was versus. Um, DJ's game was versus. Um, Versus floppy, so yeah, DJ one versus floppy. I did not see that game. And Teal one versus Genesis seven. Yeah, I don't know why. I'm not showing you guys. I can show you here. But yeah, I might record the replay of Teal versus Genesis because it was kind of interesting game. Mm -mm -mm. I feel that was like a slight little misplay in that game, but I might speak about that if I record the replay. And yeah, there's another replay that I will have to record for sure because it's just hilarious as fuck. And usually I would prefer doing these videos live, like live narration, live narrations, but that one replay was so hilarious, especially with the comment made afterwards, so I have to record that, because like, yeah, this is week 5, right, um, I have to rent on a little bit more, I hope this is fine with you guys, um, I mean, most of you will have clicked X on the video if you don't want to hear it anyways, obviously, so, last week on Sunday, there were like 3 or 4 activity wins at least, so like Ricardo's won one, Ricardo's team won like seven and one, and I think they are first at the moment, which is the the Kavai Kratos Manas. They are, yeah, yeah. Ricardo is like, he hasn't lost yet basically. He, I think he got the activity win, and also like Pearl got the activity win. It was super annoying. I stayed up super long to like four a.m. my time or some shit on Sunday, to catch all these games live. Pearl's game, uh, like two other games. And then, yeah, J-States was Finchinator also, I think they played on main or something. I don't know if it was that game, that that was not the game, I stayed up for like some game, it was Paul's game and Ricardo's game, but Ricardo I already knew that it would go to activity probably, but it was like one or two other games, I think it was yeah, Chill Shadow's game I think went to activity versus Henry if I recall correctly. And some other game too, so basically I stayed up for nothing, I missed all those games. Uh, and not, not that they didn't miss them, they didn't happen. So they just got the activity win and like Ricardo's team, uh, or Anti's team, man it's man managed by Anti. They won 7 and 1. So they are like uh, number 1 uh, overall. And the fun thing is, which like actually hurts me, uh, kind of. Week 6 came out, week 5 came out like a few hours after I went to sleep. Or maybe I was still awake at like 4 or 5 a.m. I don't remember. I might have still been awake and already made my predictions for week 5 in the morning. But some people decided to play immediately after week 5 came out. And I didn't pay attention anymore because I was like paying attention like almost the entire night. And I was like, let's record some games, let's record some games. So yeah, I didn't pay attention anymore. And obviously some people decided to play like immediately or like one hour after the next week already just came out. Which was DJ versus uh, Georgie, or what is Georgie's smog on name? Yeah, Floppy is a smog on name. They, they already played, and then the other game also already played. I'm not gonna speak about that game. That game was hilarious. I'm gonna record the replay. So, yeah, this was just like an update for you guys, and there was a third game that also happened. Oh, yeah, I was just looking up my. On YouTube, I typed in my bu uh, Buzzwall because I was using like a Buzzwall team, and someone in my Discord asked for a Buzzwall team, and I actually lost this team because I made this video five months ago, and it's like an old team, which is pretty cool. You just have to adapt some things to the meta game, but yeah, <laughs> um, we're going off, we're going off here. Yeah, so the last game that there were like three people playing immediately. Oh yeah, my man Padlo was playing this week. My man Padlo was playing this week. Hey, uh, you guys can see my predictions here. I got um. I predicted this game correct. Um, okay, uh, Pokédex G game. I predicted wrong. I predicted him to win. I did predict this game correct. Um, who else played? I think I predicted another game correct, but I'm not gonna spoil it because I might record that replay. 
Oh yeah, I predicted X-Ray correct. X-Ray also played like already, I think. Um, that X, yeah, he w he played with Empo, yeah. Uh, he actually brought a Tenor Cruel, uh, a Jealous and Empo actually brought a Jealous and let's just show. Like, I don't want play the replay. I will just show you what he brought. And it's Jealous and, and yeah, X-Ray brought a Stellar from Mega Dianzi. Man, I'm so hyped for Mega Dianzi to come out. Yeah, so this is just me rambling on. I don't know why I'm still talking. But yeah, I had to like tell you guys my thoughts and how I feel and what is going on with my uh, channel. You guys can uh, see that I'm uploading a lot and that the World Cup hype is going to be there and uh, I hope we can make 1000 subscribers uh, during World Cup because like, I'm going to do my best to like be super active and get... I think there's 500 Moon games for World Cup, 5 slots. So there's going to be a lot of Thunder Moon OU to record for me which is super hype. Oh, did I forget anything to mention, to say? Nah, I basically mentioned everything. Just wanted to say that I was annoyed that I couldn't catch those games or why there was like less OUPL content this week. But I know most people, um, like the OUPL games don't get that many views anyway because it's not like the super overhyped tournament that everyone watches. It's like more like a side tournament if that's the correct term. I mean, you still get some attention, but like, it's not like SPL, it's not like World Cup. I have, to, yeah, I should put it that way, and that's a good way to end it off. Um, Dokush signing out. Hope you guys enjoyed, and stay tuned for that World Cup coverage and for that. I'm still gonna be doing short on live and stuff, but it's like on the side. World Cup coverage is be the, gonna be the main thing, and yeah, also, I might have been able to get into World Cup if I like tried, like if I tried really hard, and like I still have to work on how I play and stuff. I know, I know that I'm not that good, but like I think Team Germany lost a few good players, so I think technically it would have been possible to get in, I could have, but I didn't even try, um, I think I could try play out, um, not play out, try out, damn, I can't even talk anymore, I've been rambling for so long, and it's like 1am, what am I doing here, um, but yeah, I might try in the future to get in the tournaments is what I'm trying to say here in the ending which is one of the like because it's like really amazing to like record m tournament games that you play yourself like people told me that they would love to see that when I like narrate my own tournament games but I actually did that once which like a tournament that didn't really matter which was in a Facebook group mm, I think I recorded like one or two games um, yeah I don't know I'm like going off the topic thank you guys for watching and yeah I do tend to I do tend to like choke in end games or not always see the correct play or the correct win condition I do want to work on that before I get into tournaments but maybe the best way is just to try out tournaments because technically I have nothing to lose try out tournaments and get better that way um, I'll definitely want to play in smog tours not the smog twist that's already in playoffs now, because I obviously can't play in that. But the next smog twist that is in like September, I definitely want to play in the weeks there. Like I, I'm, I don't think I'm going to be able to qualify at all, but I'm just want to participate and see how it is. And yeah, I've been rambling for way too long. Dokuch signing out, and yeah, sad to see him lose again. Rob, um, would have been hard, but he could have won without the crit on the Mew and without the toxic miss. Oh. It's kind of hard to say. But yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'm signing out. Good lord, rambling on for way too long. Peace, friends.